With this uh, uh, idea in mind, the new sounds and, and trying to expand, how do you look back at Savage Gold now then, after after working on new songs? Not very proud of that work. I, okay. mean, I think I think the efforts on that were were very. Uh, you know, we put a lot of effort into making that record, and the writing was, uh, you know, no no details were overlooked during that record, and uh, we still play like most you know a lot of that material, and we're still going to continue to play a lot of it. Um, you know, and it's like a nice little time capsule of couple of years of my life and the time I shared with the guys that were in the band and you know maybe sort of a you know an end cap to my creative relationship with Andrew in this band you know I imagine Andrew and I would probably play together in some other projects you know I mean I never closed the door right on working with different people but as you know Andrew being a member of Tombs you know that was that's a nice sort of exclamation point to like his his period playing in the band but you say you, you aren't Particularly content if you hear it. Why not? Wait, what was that? Content, uh, content with the, with the, if, if you listen back to the record. So, so oh no no, I think I'm I'm very content okay. with, with the way everything came out. You know, came out at that period. Mm -hmm. um, you know the uh, you know the one thing that I like to do is continually move forward and continually improve things. But that's not to say that things in the past are flawed or there's anything right. wrong with them. But you know, just like everything else, you always try to set goals higher and higher. You know, learn more, become wiser. You know, become more developed. Um, you know, dial into your emotions better. You know, mm -hmm. those are the kinds of things that I'm interested in. You know, and I don't like to really just stay in one place and be content with like, okay, I made this record. I'm going to make 15 more records that sound just right. like that. You know, if each record sounded exactly the same, I would consider that a failure. You know, and none of our records do sound the same. You know, there's a an identity that the band has. However the actual content on the records, you can tell that it's growing. It's a living, you know, sort of organism. Mm -hmm. You know, it had an infancy, it's mid, you know, midlife. It's going to age and eventually die and decompose and, you know, return to the, you know, the cosmos, you know what I mean? What then, with the, this idea in mind, what then was the starting point for the new material that you've written? What, what That's sort of a vague at? point because I think, like, there was like a couple of pieces of songs that Andrew and I had started working on. And then when Charlie and I, you know, when he was a, a formerly a member of the band, we brought that material into our creative process. And uh, that, you know, was added to and revised and refined and, you know, made into, you know, a, a piece of work that we have. Uh, and then we just taken from that, taking that cue and sort of continuing with that, you know, and expanding from those ideas. And, and how would you say that, that the arrival of Charlie has, has changed? You, you mentioned you always try to, to develop yourself, and how, how do you think it changed you as a, as a songwriter and a musician? Well, I mean, you know, it's just like every, everything else in your life. It's like, it's all personal relationships. And, uh, you know, as people, you have new people come into your life, it changes you, you change them, and it changes the, the, the dynamic between everybody. So, uh, that's, you know, maybe we'll see when we record all these next songs. We can compare and say, okay, you know, we're doing this here and we didn't do that there. It's like, when you're in the middle of the, of the process though, it's hard to really, you know, answer questions like that because to me it's all just one continuum of like, you know, music and art and all that sort of stuff because I never stop. I'm always thinking about creating things. Mm -hmm. I never, it's never like, okay, we're on tour. And then when we get back, we're gonna write a new album. It's like, I'm always, playing with ideas, always. I'm always writing lyrics. I'm always putting ideas down my notebook. I'm always playing guitar with ideas for songs. And there's never like an end point to that. And I suppose this is then different for every song, but what inspires you at the moment? What, what kind of things w will inspire you? Um, well, I think like maybe guitar wise, uh, you know, sort of working with space and atmosphere a little bit more. Like on the last album, we were more uh, technical, like a little bit more concerned with precision and uh, and speed, you know? And I think now it's, uh, you know, maybe more atmosphere, using less notes to get the point across, mm -hmm. uh, that kind of thing. And, um, you know, lyrically, uh, you know, it's too early to tell, you know, really. I mean, it's just a continuation of like, you know, my meditations on like, you know, death and life forces and you know, things like that, you know, the sort of place that we have in the cosmos and 
that's always been like a big topic in the last couple of records. Do, do you discuss these concepts and I ideas with uh, Charlie and, and with the rest of the band? Uh, you know, I haven't. That's probably something, I, maybe we should do that. You know, some, talk about like some songwriting ideas. <laughs> well, well for, for instance, because you say you've written a couple of songs. Do, Charlie, do you know what some of these songs are about? Uh, you know, vaguely, I'll, t I'll, you know, in rehearsal, I'll look at a lyric sheet, you know, mm -hmm. kind of get, usually the title sort of just captures the entire essence of the song, right. uh, which for me, it's, it's all about that, that sort of, that one overall message, that one sort of theme, mm -hmm. you know, it's like a type of song, you know, so lyrically, I mean, you know, Mike's obviously great does a lot of different things but you know lyrically I think you could say that you're always evolving and changing lyrics as you go along yeah. so you know things take on and other lyrics work better with other sections mm -hmm. so you know but um, yeah I mean every now and again we'll lightly discuss them thematic elements right. within a song and then uh, for you as well with the, with uh, joining tombs has your uh, development or, or approach to the music changed quite a bit yeah um, I think, you know, learning an entire catalog, or like a back catalog of mm -hmm. someone's music is um, so beneficial. You're, you're, you're literally thrown into a completely different, you know, set of rules and, and what you can do and what you can't do. And right. uh, yeah, it's definitely changed my writing. I, I still like to, I have a way I do things, I like to think, you know. Uh, so there's always that element in there, but, you know, throwing little flourishes in here or there, you know, to right. change it. Um, it's the most satisfying thing about living a musical life is being able to spice that stuff up, change things, mm -hmm. evolve them, sections. So yeah, right. it's definitely changed my playing quite a bit. Finally then, uh, Mike, you met mentioned uh, the way you would, in, in your lyrics would reflect on things like death, uh, our place in the universe. And have you gotten closer? This is just going to be a terrible, uh, or diff terribly difficult to answer. But have you come closer to some sort of answer to all these uh, kind of metaphysical questions? I don't think there is an answer to any of those questions, really, because until you like step out into the great abyss, you know, and you change your form of your consciousness, you're never really going to know anything. You know, like it's probably more questions than anything. You know, like I'm just, it's a big pastime of mine is to read about these things and dig deeper into it. And, you know, there's a lot of like work being done out on the fringes and, you know, consciousness expansion and, you know, just uh, theoretical things. But also, you know, the reality of it is that, you know, something like 80% of our DNA is chimpanzee DNA. So we would, you know, like when a, when a monkey looks at a human, it's like, what what's the difference there? And what can that ape comprehend versus what a human can comprehend? So it's like, I think it's like hubristic for humans to think that they can understand things that are greater than them, you right. know, like the concept of infinity, you know, it's like you could go over and over forever and try to put your mind around that, but, you know, it's, you, make, it's real, you realize that you're just a worm staring up at the sun and trying to figure out what that warmth comes from, right. you know, you can't, I don't think we're, we have the sensory inputs, the way to process that material. So I mean, you know, it's just maybe sort of the end, the takeaway from all this stuff is just like a, you know, a taming of the human ego and mm -hmm. realizing that like sometimes you just have to enjoy things and, and exist and not try to make sense of a lot of stuff until, because it's beyond you maybe, mm -hmm. you know. Like when you pull a fish out of the ocean, it's like, what world is that fish in now? He doesn't comprehend what the land is like because he spent his whole life living under the water, so, yeah. Right. Thank you very much for your Thank time. Thank you. Thank you.